Question 1. How do different types of microorganisms affect food safety and shelf life? A. All microorganisms enhance food shelf life. B. Only bacteria are harmful, while fungi and viruses improve food quality. C. Different microorganisms can either spoil food or cause foodborne illnesses, affecting food safety and shelf life negatively. D. Microorganisms have no impact on food safety or shelf life. Answer. C. Different microorganisms can either spoil food or cause foodborne illnesses, affecting food safety and shelf life negatively. Understanding the role of microorganisms is crucial for effective food safety management. Question 2. Explain the role of water activity in microbial growth in food products. A. Lower water activity increases microbial growth. B. Water activity has no influence on microbial growth. C. Higher water activity promotes microbial growth, while lower water activity inhibits it. D. Only salt water activity affects microbial growth. Answer. C. Higher water activity promotes microbial growth, while lower water activity inhibits it. Controlling water activity is a key method for preserving food safety. Question 3. Describe the process for conducting a thorough facility risk assessment for a new food establishment. A. Ignoring potential risks and focusing solely on profitability. B. Identifying potential hazards, evaluating the likelihood and impact of these hazards, and determining mitigation strategies. C. Conducting a risk assessment only after the first incident occurs. D. Outsourcing risk assessment to minimize responsibility. Answer. B. Identifying potential hazards, evaluating the likelihood and impact of these hazards, and determining mitigation strategies. A proactive approach is essential for ensuring food safety from the start. Question 4. What are the critical factors in selecting an effective sanitizing agent for various food contact surfaces? A. Fragrance and color of the sanitizing agent. B. Compatibility with surface materials, effectiveness against specific pathogens, and safety for food contact surfaces. C. Price is the only factor that matters. D. The popularity of the sanitizing brand among other businesses. Answer. B. Compatibility with surface materials, effectiveness against specific pathogens, and safety for food contact surfaces. Selecting the right sanitizing agent is vital for maintaining a safe food preparation environment. Question 5. Detail the steps involved in implementing a farm-to-table traceability program. A. Relying solely on verbal agreements with local farmers. B. Documenting the source, transportation, and handling of all ingredients from the farm to the table. C. Implementing traceability for only non-perishable items. D. Assuming all farm-to-table products are automatically safe and require no traceability. Answer. B. Documenting the source, transportation, and handling of all ingredients from the farm to the table. Traceability is key to ensuring food safety and quality in farm-to-table operations. Question 6. Discuss the importance of temperature control in the prevention of toxin production by Staphylococcus aureus in food. A. Temperature control is irrelevant for Staphylococcus aureus. B. Keeping food at proper temperatures prevents the bacteria from producing toxins. C. Staphylococcus aureus toxins are destroyed at room temperature. D. Freezing food is the only way to prevent toxin production. Answer. B. Keeping food at proper temperatures prevents the bacteria from producing toxins. Proper temperature control is crucial to inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria and their toxins. Question 7. Explain the principle of thermal processing in food safety and its impact on pathogen reduction. A. Thermal processing enhances the flavor with no impact on pathogens. B. 
It involves cooling food to sub-zero temperatures to kill pathogens. C. Applying heat to food to a level that reduces pathogens to safe levels. D. Thermal processing refers to the packaging process only. Answer. C. Applying heat to food to a level that reduces pathogens to safe levels. Thermal processing is a critical method for ensuring the microbial safety of food. Question 8. How does sous vide cooking require adjustments in traditional food safety protocols? A. Sous vide eliminates the need for any food safety protocols. B. It requires precise temperature control and extended cooking times to ensure pathogen reduction. C. Only the seasoning process needs to be adjusted. D. Sous vide cooking is only safe for fruits and vegetables. Answer. B. It requires precise temperature control and extended cooking times to ensure pathogen reduction. Sosified cooking demands strict adherence to temperature and time to ensure safety. Question 9. Describe the regulatory challenges and considerations for incorporating novel protein sources into commercial food products. A. Novel proteins are exempt from all food safety regulations. B. There are no challenges. Novel proteins are automatically considered safe. C. Ensuring the novel proteins meet safety standards, including allergen testing and nutritional assessment. D. The main challenge is the taste adaptation for consumers. Answer. C. Ensuring the novel proteins meet safety standards, including allergen testing and nutritional assessment. Regulatory compliance is essential for the safe introduction of novel proteins into the food market. Question 10. What are the specific food safety risks associated with raw milk cheese production? A. There are no risks. Raw milk cheeses are inherently safe. B. Risk of contamination with pathogens like Listeria monocytogenes, requiring strict hygiene and aging practices. C. Only the risk of overaging the cheese. D. The primary risk is in the packaging process, not the milk. Answer. B. Risk of contamination with pathogens like Listeria monocytogenes, requiring strict hygiene and aging practices. Managing these risks is crucial for the safe production of raw milk cheeses. Question 11. Discuss the significance of the hazard analysis and critical control points, HACCP, system in seafood processing. A. HACCP is only relevant for meat processing, not seafood. B. It provides a systematic approach to identifying and controlling food safety hazards, crucial for preventing seafood-related illnesses. C. Seafood processing uses HACCP for quality control, not safety. D. The HACCP system is too complicated to implement in seafood processing. Answer. B. It provides a systematic approach to identifying and controlling food safety hazards, crucial for preventing seafood-related illnesses. HACCP is fundamental in ensuring the safety of seafood products. Question 12. How do antinutrients in plant-based foods impact food safety and nutritional quality? A. Antinutrients significantly enhance the safety and nutritional quality of plant-based foods. B. They can reduce the bioavailability of nutrients, but proper processing and preparation methods can minimize their impact. C. Antinutrients are toxic and make plant-based foods unsafe. D. Plant-based foods do not contain antinutrients. Answer. B. They can reduce the bioavailability of nutrients, but proper processing and preparation methods can minimize their impact. Understanding and managing antinutrients are important for maximizing the nutritional value of plant-based foods. Question 13. Explain the role of predictive microbiology in managing food safety risks. A. It predicts future food trends rather than safety risks. B. Uses mathematical models to estimate the growth, survival, or inactivation of pathogens under various conditions. C. 
Predictive microbiology is concerned with improving food taste. D. It is a theoretical concept with no practical application in food safety. Answer. B. Uses mathematical models to estimate the growth, survival, or inactivation of pathogens under various conditions. Predictive microbiology is a valuable tool for assessing and managing food safety risks. Question 14. What are the challenges in ensuring the microbiological safety of ready-to-eat, RTE, foods? A. RTE foods are always microbiologically safe and pose no challenges. B. Preventing contamination during processing and packaging, as these foods do not undergo further cooking by the consumer. C. The main challenge is the cost of ingredients. D. RTE foods only need refrigeration to remain safe. Answer. B. Preventing contamination during processing and packaging, as these foods do not undergo further cooking by the consumer. Ensuring the safety of RTE foods requires stringent control measures throughout the production process. Question 15. Describe the impact of food packaging materials on food safety and preservation. A. Packaging materials have no impact on food safety or preservation. B. The right packaging materials can protect food from contamination, extend shelf life, and maintain its quality. C. Only plastic packaging improves food safety and preservation. D. Packaging is solely for aesthetic purposes, not safety or preservation. And Answer. B. The right packaging materials can protect food from contamination, extend shelf life, and maintain its quality. Choosing appropriate packaging is crucial for food safety and preservation. Question 16. How can the principles of environmental sustainability be integrated into food safety practices? A. By disregarding food safety in favor of environmental concerns. B. Through the use of sustainable, non-toxic cleaning and sanitizing products and reducing waste. C. Environmental sustainability is irrelevant to food safety practices. D. Sustainability practices compromise food safety. Answer. B. Through the use of sustainable, non-toxic cleaning and sanitizing products and reducing waste. Integrating sustainability into food safety enhances both environmental and public health outcomes. Question 17. Discuss the methods and importance of allergen control in a manufacturing setting. A. Allergen control is only important in restaurants, not in manufacturing. B. Implementing dedicated production lines, thorough cleaning protocols, and clear labeling to prevent cross-contact and protect consumers with allergies. C. Using allergens freely, assuming consumers will manage their own allergies. D. The method involves removing all allergens from the manufacturing process entirely. Answer. B. Implementing dedicated production lines, thorough cleaning protocols, and clear labeling to prevent cross-contact and protect consumers with allergies. Effective allergen control is essential for consumer safety in food manufacturing. Question 18. What are the key considerations for ensuring the safety of fermented food products? A. Fermentation eliminates all food safety concerns. B. Monitoring fermentation conditions, such as time, temperature, and pH, to ensure pathogenic microorganisms are inhibited. C. Only the taste of the fermented product matters, not safety considerations. D. Fermented foods are only safe when produced in commercial settings. Answer. B. Monitoring fermentation conditions, such as time, temperature, and pH, to ensure pathogenic microorganisms are inhibited. Properly controlled fermentation is critical for the safety of these products. Question 19. Describe the challenges and solutions for pathogen control in organic food production. A. Organic foods are naturally free from pathogens. B. 
Challenges include restrictions on synthetic chemical use. Solutions involve integrated pest management, IPM, and biological controls. C. The main challenge is the higher cost of organic certification. D. Pathogens are considered beneficial in organic food production. And Answer. B. Challenges include restrictions on synthetic chemical use. Solutions involve integrated pest management, IPM, and biological controls. Organic production requires alternative strategies for pathogen control to meet both safety and organic standards. Question 20. Explain the role of biofilms in food processing environments and strategies for their control. A. Biofilms enhance the nutritional value of food. B. Biofilms are aggregates of microorganisms that can protect pathogens from sanitation efforts, requiring thorough cleaning and sanitizing protocols for control. C. Biofilms only form in medical settings, not in food processing. D. The presence of biofilms is a sign of a healthy microbial ecosystem in food processing. Answer. B. Biofilms are aggregates of microorganisms that can protect pathogens from sanitation efforts, requiring thorough cleaning and sanitizing protocols for control. Managing biofilms is crucial for maintaining hygiene in food processing environments. Question 21. How does the complexity of global food supply chains affect food safety management? A. Simplifies management due to standardized global regulations. B. Increases challenges due to varying regulations, longer transportation times, and more points of potential contamination. C. Has no effect. Food safety management practices are universal. D. Only affects the pricing of food, not safety practices. Answer. B. Increases challenges due to varying regulations, longer transportation times, and more points of potential contamination. Managing food safety in complex global supply chains requires careful coordination and adherence to diverse standards. Question 22. Discuss the impact of climate change on emerging food safety concerns. A. Climate change reduces food safety concerns by stabilizing global temperatures. B. Leads to new and exacerbated food safety risks, including changes in pathogen prevalence and distribution. C. Climate change primarily affects food quantity, not safety. D. Enhances food safety by promoting biodiversity. Answer. B. Leads to new and exacerbated food safety risks, including changes in pathogen prevalence and distribution. Climate change poses significant challenges to food safety through environmental alterations. Question 23. What strategies can be employed to reduce the risk of cross-contamination in open kitchens? A. Ignoring cross-contamination risks as they are minimal in open kitchens. B. Utilizing physical barriers, designated workstations, and strict personal hygiene practices. C. Limiting menu items to reduce the use of diverse ingredients. D. Allowing customers to view food preparation, thus eliminating the need for additional measures. Answer. B. Utilizing physical barriers, designated workstations, and strict personal hygiene practices. Effective strategies are essential to mitigate cross-contamination risks in open kitchen layouts. Question 24. Explain the importance of effective waste management practices in preventing foodborne illness. A. Waste management has no impact on foodborne illnesses. B. Proper disposal and handling of waste can reduce pest attraction and the risk of contamination. C. Effective waste management is only necessary in large-scale food production. D. The primary importance is aesthetic, keeping the premises clean. Answer. B. Proper disposal and handling of waste can reduce pest attraction and the risk of contamination. Effective waste management is a critical component of food safety practices. Question 25. 
Describe the process and challenges of maintaining cold chain integrity for perishable foods during transportation. A. The cold chain is irrelevant as long as foods are consumed quickly. B. Ensuring consistent temperature control and monitoring throughout transportation to prevent spoilage and growth of pathogens. C. The main challenge is the cost of refrigerated transport vehicles. D. Using insulated containers alone guarantees cold chain integrity. Answer. B. Ensuring consistent temperature control and monitoring throughout transportation to prevent spoilage and growth of pathogens. Maintaining the cold chain is crucial for the safety and quality of perishable foods. Question 26. Discuss the role of whole genome sequencing in identifying and controlling foodborne pathogens. A. It is too advanced a technique to be useful in food safety. B. Provides precise information on pathogen strains, enhancing traceability and outbreak investigation. C. Only used for genetically modified organisms, not pathogens. D. Primarily a research tool with no practical application in food safety. Answer. B. Provides precise information on pathogen strains, enhancing traceability and outbreak investigation. Whole genome sequencing is a powerful tool for improving food safety management. Question 27. How can nanotechnology be applied to enhance food safety? A. By making food packages more visually appealing. B. Developing antimicrobial coatings for food contact surfaces and sensors to detect pathogens in food. C. Nanotechnology is considered too risky to be used in food safety applications. D. Solely through the improvement of food texture. Answer. B. Developing antimicrobial coatings for food contact surfaces and sensors to detect pathogens in food. Nanotechnology offers innovative solutions to enhance food safety. Question 28. What are the food safety considerations in the use of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, in food production? A. GMOs are banned worldwide due to safety concerns. B. Ensuring they undergo rigorous safety testing to assess potential allergenicity, toxicity, and nutritional effects. C. GMOs are inherently unsafe and should be avoided. D. There are no considerations. GMOs are identical to non-GMOs in terms of safety. Answer. B. Ensuring they undergo rigorous safety testing to assess potential allergenicity, toxicity, and nutritional effects. GMO safety is carefully evaluated before they are approved for food production. Question 29. Describe the potential food safety risks and benefits of using edible coatings on fruits and vegetables. A. Edible coatings are purely decorative and offer no safety benefits. B can extend shelf life and reduce microbial contamination, but must be formulated to prevent allergen introduction or other hazards. C. Increase the risk of bacterial growth due to moisture retention. D. Make fruits and vegetables more difficult to clean properly. Answer. B can extend shelf life and reduce microbial contamination, but must be formulated to prevent allergen introduction or other hazards. Edible coatings represent an innovative approach to enhancing food safety and quality. Question 30. How does consumer demand for natural and minimally processed foods influence food safety practices? A. It has led to the elimination of all food safety regulations for these products. B requires adaptation of safety practices to ensure these foods meet safety standards without compromising their natural qualities. C. Consumer demand has no impact on food safety practices. D. Has made food safety practices more lenient due to the perceived safety of natural foods. Answer. B requires adaptation of safety practices to ensure these foods meet safety standards without compromising their natural qualities. Addressing consumer preferences while maintaining food safety is a key challenge for the industry. Question 31. 
Discuss the role of hand hygiene in preventing norovirus outbreaks in food service settings. A. Hand hygiene is unrelated to norovirus prevention. B. Proper hand washing and the use of hand sanitizers can significantly reduce the risk of norovirus transmission. C. Norovirus is primarily airborne, making hand hygiene ineffective. D. Frequent glove use eliminates the need for hand hygiene. Answer. B. Proper hand washing and the use of hand sanitizers can significantly reduce the risk of norovirus transmission. Hand hygiene is a critical control measure in preventing foodborne illness outbreaks. Question 32. Explain the challenges of detecting and controlling mycotoxins in the food supply. A. Mycotoxins are easily detected and controlled with basic cooking methods. B. They can occur in various foods, are stable to cooking and processing, and require sophisticated detection methods. C. Mycotoxins only affect a small range of foods, simplifying control efforts. D. The presence of mycotoxins is a myth. No real challenge exists. Answer. B. They can occur in various foods, are stable to cooking and processing, and require sophisticated detection methods. Mycotoxin management is complex and critical for food safety. Question 33. What are the food safety implications of antibiotic use in animal agriculture? A. Antibiotics enhance food safety by improving animal health. B. Leads to the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, posing a risk to human health. C. Only affects the taste of meat and dairy products. D. Antibiotic use in animals is strictly for growth promotion with no implications for food safety. Answer. B. Leads to the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, posing a risk to human health. Responsible antibiotic use is essential to prevent the spread of resistance. Question 34. Describe the process of risk analysis in food safety decision-making. A. Risk analysis is guessing the potential hazards without any systematic approach. B. Involves hazard identification, risk assessment, risk management, and risk communication to make informed decisions about food safety. C. Focused solely on financial risks, not safety. D. Conducted only after a food safety incident occurs. Answer. B. Involves hazard identification, risk assessment, risk management, and risk communication to make informed decisions about food safety. A systematic approach to risk analysis is fundamental for effective food safety management. Question 35. How do food preservatives affect microbial growth and food safety? A. Preservatives have no effect on microbial growth. B. They can inhibit or kill microorganisms, extending shelf life and enhancing safety, but must be used within safe and approved levels. C. All food preservatives are toxic to humans and should be avoided. D. Only natural preservatives are effective. Synthetic ones are harmful. Answer. B. They can inhibit or kill microorganisms, extending shelf life and enhancing safety, but must be used within safe and approved levels. The judicious use of preservatives is key to food safety and quality. Question 36. Discuss the food safety considerations for mobile food vendors. A. Mobile vendors are exempt from food safety regulations. B. Face unique challenges such as limited water supply and space for proper storage and sanitation requiring specialized strategies to maintain safety. C. Only need to focus on taste, not safety. D. The mobility of the vendor inherently guarantees food safety. Answer. B. Face unique challenges such as limited water supply and space for proper storage and sanitation, requiring specialized strategies to maintain safety. Mobile food vendors must adhere to strict safety practices to ensure the safety of their offerings. Question 37. Explain the mechanisms by which high-pressure processing, HPP, 
inactivates microbial pathogens in food. A. HPP uses high temperatures to burn off pathogens. B. Applies intense pressure to disrupt cellular structures of pathogens without the need for heat, preserving food quality. C. Mechanism involves adding preservatives under pressure. D. HPP enhances the flavor, making pathogens harmless. Answer. B. Applies intense pressure to disrupt cellular structures of pathogens without the need for heat, preserving food quality. HPP is an effective non-thermal pasteurization technique. Question 38. What are the challenges and strategies for ensuring food safety in buffet-style dining? A. Buffets are inherently safe and require no special strategies. B. Challenges include maintaining food at safe temperatures, preventing cross-contamination, and managing food replenishment. Strategies involve strict monitoring and training staff. C. The only challenge is keeping the food warm. D. Using disposable utensils is the sole strategy needed. Answer. B. Challenges include maintaining food at safe temperatures, preventing cross-contamination, and managing food replenishment. Strategies involve strict monitoring and training staff. Effective management is crucial in buffet settings to ensure food safety. Question 39. Describe the importance of effective bird control measures in agricultural settings to prevent food contamination. A. Birds are not a significant source of contamination in agriculture. B. Birds can carry and spread pathogens to crops. Control measures such as netting and scare devices help minimize this risk. C. The main importance is to protect the aesthetic appearance of crops. D. Bird control is solely about increasing crop yields, not improving safety. Answer. B. Birds can carry and spread pathogens to crops. Control measures such as netting and scare devices help minimize this risk. Preventing bird-related contamination is important for food safety. Question 40. How can ultraviolet UV light be utilized for water disinfection in food processing plants? A. UV light is only used for enhancing plant growth, not for water disinfection. B. Exposing water to UV light can effectively inactivate waterborne pathogens without adding chemicals, making it suitable for food processing uses. C. UV light treatment makes water too acidic for food processing. D. It is used to color water for food aesthetics. Answer. B. Exposing water to UV light can effectively inactivate waterborne pathogens without adding chemicals, making it suitable for food processing uses. UV disinfection is a safe and efficient method for ensuring water quality. Question 41. To discuss the impact of improper food storage temperatures on the growth of psychotrophic bacteria. A. Psychotrophic bacteria are eliminated at freezing temperatures, so storage temperature is irrelevant. B. Improper temperatures, especially those above refrigeration and below cooking temperatures, can encourage the growth of psychotrophic bacteria, leading to spoilage and potential foodborne illness. C. Psychotrophic bacteria growth is only a concern in tropical climates. D. All bacteria, including psychotrophic, are inactive in cold storage, making temperature control unnecessary. Answer. B. Improper temperatures, especially those above refrigeration and below cooking temperatures, can encourage the growth of psychotrophic bacteria, leading to spoilage and potential foodborne illness. Proper cold storage is essential to inhibit their growth. Question 42. Explain the significance of virulence factors in pathogenic bacteria and their impact on foodborne illness. A. Virulence factors are beneficial nutrients that enhance food safety. B. Virulence factors, such as toxins and enzymes, enable bacteria to cause disease by overcoming host defenses, making some strains more dangerous than others. C. The concept of virulence factors is outdated and no longer relevant to modern food safety. D. Virulence factors only affect the taste and appearance of food, not its safety. 
Answer. B. Virulence factors, such as toxins and enzymes, enable bacteria to cause disease by overcoming host defenses, making some strains more dangerous than others. Understanding these factors is crucial for assessing and managing foodborne illness risks. Question 43. What are the key considerations for safe food handling practices in schools and childcare settings? A. Food safety is less critical in these settings due to children's stronger immune systems. B. Prioritizing allergen management, proper temperature control, and personal hygiene to protect vulnerable populations from foodborne illnesses. C. Using only pre-packaged foods to avoid the need for safe handling practices. D. Limiting meal variety to simplify food safety management. Answer. B. Prioritizing allergen management, proper temperature control, and personal hygiene to protect vulnerable populations from foodborne illnesses. Children are particularly susceptible to foodborne illnesses, making stringent food safety practices essential. Question 44. Describe the methods for ensuring the safety of food additives and colorings. A. Food additives and colorings are naturally safe and require no testing. B. Rigorous testing for toxicity, allergenicity, and metabolic effects, followed by approval from relevant health authorities before use. C. Selection based on the color vibrancy and flavor enhancement properties only. D. Ensuring that they are sourced from organic materials, which guarantees safety. Answer. B. Rigorous testing for toxicity, allergenicity, and metabolic effects, followed by approval from relevant health authorities before use. The safety of food additives and colorings is critical and heavily regulated to protect consumer health. Question 45. How does the acidity of food influence the growth of pathogenic and spoilage microorganisms? A. Acidity has no impact on microbial growth. Temperature is the only factor that matters. B. Lower pH, higher acidity, generally inhibits microbial growth, making acidic foods less susceptible to spoilage and pathogen proliferation. C. Higher acidity promotes the growth of all types of microorganisms. D. Microorganisms prefer acidic environments, so lower fate increases food safety risks. Answer. B. Lower pH, higher acidity, generally inhibits microbial growth, making acidic foods less susceptible to spoilage and pathogen proliferation. Acidity is a natural barrier to many pathogens and spoilage organisms. Question 46. Discuss the application and limitations of rapid microbial detection methods in food safety. A. These methods are too rapid to provide accurate results and are therefore unreliable. B. Offer quick preliminary results to enhance decision-making, but may require confirmation by traditional culturing methods for regulatory compliance. C. Rapid methods are only suitable for detecting bacteria, not viruses, or fungi. D. There are no limitations. Rapid methods have completely replaced traditional testing. Answer. B. Offer quick preliminary results to enhance decision-making, but may require confirmation by traditional culturing methods for regulatory compliance. Rapid detection methods are valuable tools but have limitations that must be considered. Question 47. Explain the principles of dry heat sterilization and its effectiveness against foodborne pathogens. A. Dry heat sterilization cools food rapidly to kill pathogens. B uses high temperatures to destroy microorganisms through oxidation of cellular components, effective for equipment and utensil sterilization, but not commonly applied directly to food. C. Ineffective against most foodborne pathogens, wet heat is always preferred. D. Primarily used to enhance food flavors rather than for sterilization. Answer. B uses high temperatures to destroy microorganisms through oxidation of cellular components, effective for equipment and utensil sterilization, but not commonly applied directly to food. Dry heat sterilization is a critical control point in some food processing environments. Question 48. 
What are the food safety risks associated with the consumption of raw seafood, and how can they be mitigated? A. Raw seafood is always safe to consume, posing no food safety risks. B. Risks include exposure to pathogens and parasites. Mitigation strategies include sourcing from reputable suppliers, proper handling, and consumer education on risks. C. Freezing seafood for a short period is sufficient to eliminate all risks. D. Cooking seafood eliminates the unique flavors, so no mitigation is necessary. Answer B. Risks include exposure to pathogens and parasites. Mitigation strategies include sourcing from reputable suppliers, proper handling, and consumer education on risks. Safe sourcing and handling are essential for reducing food safety risks in raw seafood. Question 49. Describe the role of oxygen in the proliferation of aerobic versus anaerobic bacteria in food products. A. Oxygen is toxic to all bacteria, preventing their growth in food. B. Aerobic bacteria require oxygen to grow, while anaerobic bacteria can grow without it. Understanding these conditions helps in designing effective food preservation strategies. C. Only anaerobic bacteria are harmful, so oxygenation of all foods is recommended. D. The presence of oxygen has no effect on bacterial growth. Only temperature matters. Answer B. Aerobic bacteria require oxygen to grow, while anaerobic bacteria can grow without it. Understanding these conditions helps in designing effective food preservation strategies. Managing oxygen exposure is crucial in food safety and preservation. Question 50. How can the proper design of food processing facilities contribute to enhanced food safety? A. Design plays no role in food safety. Only the final product testing matters. B. By incorporating features that facilitate cleanliness, prevent cross-contamination, and ensure efficient workflow, reducing the risk of foodborne illness. C. Focusing solely on aesthetic design elements to attract consumers. D. Ensuring the facility is large enough to accommodate all equipment without considering workflow. Answer B. By incorporating features that facilitate cleanliness, prevent cross-contamination, and ensure efficient workflow reducing the risk of foodborne illness. Thoughtful facility design is a foundational element of food safety management. Question 51. Discuss the food safety implications of using recycled materials in food packaging. A. Recycled materials are banned in food packaging due to safety concerns. B. While environmentally beneficial, they must meet safety standards to prevent contamination, requiring thorough testing and certification. C. Using recycled materials improves food safety by reducing environmental toxins. D. Recycled materials are only used for non-food contact packaging due to inherent safety risks. Answer B. While environmentally beneficial, they must meet safety standards to prevent contamination, requiring thorough testing and certification. Ensuring the safety of recycled packaging materials is essential for their use in food contact applications. Question 52. Explain the role of consumer education in preventing foodborne illnesses. A. Consumer education complicates food safety and is best left to professionals. B. Educating consumers on proper food handling, cooking, and storage practices can significantly reduce the incidence of foodborne illnesses. C. Only children need education on food safety. Adults naturally understand these principles. D. Food safety education is ineffective and unnecessary due to advances in food processing technology. Answer. B. Educating consumers on proper food handling, cooking, and storage practices can significantly reduce the incidence of foodborne illnesses. Informed consumers play a crucial role in the overall food safety continuum. Question 53. What are the specific challenges of ensuring food safety in plant-based meat alternatives? A. Plant-based products are inherently safe and present no food safety challenges. B. Challenges include managing allergens, ensuring microbial safety without traditional preservatives, and meeting nutritional labeling requirements. 
C. The main challenge is creating a flavor profile similar to real meat. D. Plant-based meat alternatives require no safety considerations, only taste adjustments. Answer B. Challenges include managing allergens, ensuring microbial safety without traditional preservatives, and meeting nutritional labeling requirements. Addressing these challenges is crucial for the safe production of plant-based meat alternatives. Question 54. Describe the regulatory framework for managing food safety risks in imported foods. A. Imported foods are exempt from domestic food safety regulations. B. Imported foods must comply with domestic safety standards, including testing and certification, to ensure they do not pose health risks. C. There are no specific regulations for imported foods. They are treated the same as domestically produced items. D. Food safety for imported products is solely the responsibility of the exporting country. Answer. B. Imported foods must comply with domestic safety standards, including testing and certification, to ensure they do not pose health risks. Ensuring the safety of imported foods requires rigorous regulatory oversight. Question 55. How do enzymatic reactions in food affect its safety and shelf life? A. Enzymatic reactions have no impact on food safety or shelf life. B. They can lead to spoilage or undesirable changes in food quality, but controlling temperature and pH can inhibit these reactions. C. Enzymatic reactions improve the safety and extend the shelf life of all foods. D. All enzymatic reactions in food are beneficial and sought after in food production. Answer. B. They can lead to spoilage or undesirable changes in food quality, but controlling temperature and pH can inhibit these reactions. Managing enzymatic activity is important for maintaining food quality and safety. Question 56. Discuss the importance of monitoring and controlling humidity in food storage areas. A. Humidity control is only necessary for dry foods, not refrigerated or frozen items. B. Proper humidity levels can prevent the growth of mold and bacteria, reducing spoilage and extending the shelf life of many foods. C. High humidity levels are preferred in all storage areas to keep foods moist. D. Humidity has no real impact on food safety, focusing instead on temperature control. Answer. B. Proper humidity levels can prevent the growth of mold and bacteria, reducing spoilage and extending the shelf life of many foods. Humidity control is a critical aspect of effective food storage. Question 57. Explain the concept of quorum sensing in bacteria and its relevance to food safety. A. Quorum sensing is a communication method used by bacteria to coordinate group behaviors, including virulence, which can influence the severity of foodborne outbreaks. B. It refers to the ability of bacteria to sense and respond to light, improving their growth in food. C. Quorum sensing is only observed in beneficial bacteria, making it irrelevant to food safety. D. This concept is a theoretical model with no practical applications in food microbiology. Answer. A. Quorum sensing is a communication method used by bacteria to coordinate group behaviors, including virulence, which can influence the severity of foodborne outbreaks. Understanding quorum sensing can aid in developing strategies to mitigate bacterial pathogenicity in foods. Question 58. What are the implications of food safety audits for continuous improvement in food establishments? A. Audits are punitive measures that offer no real benefits for improvement. B. Regular food safety audits help identify areas for improvement, verify compliance with regulations, and encourage the adoption of best practices. C. Food safety audits focus solely on financial aspects, not operational practices. D. They are conducted once and provide a permanent certification without the need for further improvement. Answer. B. Regular food safety audits help identify areas for improvement, verify compliance with regulations, and encourage the adoption of best practices. 
Audits are a key component of a proactive food safety culture. Question 59. Describe the strategies for controlling listeria monocytogens in ready-to-eat food facilities. A. Control strategies are unnecessary for listeria monocytogens due to its rarity. B. Implementing rigorous cleaning and sanitizing protocols, especially in areas prone to moisture, and conducting regular environmental testing to detect and eliminate sources of contamination. C. Using high doses of preservatives in all ready-to-eat foods to kill the bacteria. D. Limiting the production of ready-to-eat foods as the only effective strategy. Answer. B. Implementing rigorous cleaning and sanitizing protocols, especially in areas prone to moisture, and conducting regular environmental testing to detect and eliminate sources of contamination. Preventative measures are crucial in controlling listeria in food processing environments. Question 60. How does the fortification of foods with vitamins and minerals impact food safety? A. Fortification introduces significant food safety risks and should be avoided. B. While beneficial for nutritional value, it requires careful formulation to prevent interactions that could affect food safety or stability. C. Fortification automatically makes food safer by adding essential nutrients. D. Nutritional fortification has no impact on food safety, only on taste. Answer. B. While beneficial for nutritional value, it requires careful formulation to prevent interactions that could affect food safety or stability. Ensuring the safety of fortified foods involves balancing nutritional enhancements with food safety considerations. Question 61. Discuss the role of packaging in extending the shelf life and ensuring the safety of dairy products. A. Packaging has no effect on dairy products. B. Effective packaging prevents microbial contamination and physical damage, maintaining product integrity and safety. C. Packaging is solely for marketing purposes in dairy products. D. Only glass packaging is suitable for dairy to ensure safety. Answer. B. Effective packaging prevents microbial contamination and physical damage, maintaining product integrity and safety. The right packaging is crucial for dairy safety and shelf life. Question 62. Explain the factors influencing the effectiveness of chemical sanitizers against foodborne pathogens. A. The color of the sanitizer is the primary factor. B. Concentration, contact time, temperature, and pH affect sanitizer efficacy. C. Only the price of the chemical sanitizer determines its effectiveness. D. Effectiveness is consistent across all conditions and pathogens. Answer. B. Concentration, contact time, temperature, and pH affect sanitizer efficacy. Understanding these factors is essential for proper sanitizer use in food safety practices. Question 63. What are the considerations for ensuring the microbiological safety of non-alcoholic beverages? A. Non-alcoholic beverages are inherently safe and require no safety considerations. B. Pasteurization, filtration, and packaging in aseptic conditions to prevent contamination. C. Adding high levels of sugar to inhibit bacterial growth. D. Safety considerations are only necessary for alcoholic beverages. Answer. B. Pasteurization, filtration, and packaging in aseptic conditions to prevent contamination. These processes are key to ensuring the safety of non-alcoholic beverages. Question 64. Describe the impact of food processing techniques on the allergenicity of food proteins. A. All processing techniques eliminate allergens from food. B. Certain processing methods can reduce or alter allergenic proteins, but others may have no effect or even increase allergenicity. C. Processing techniques are focused on taste, not allergenicity. D. Freezing is the only method that affects allergenicity. Answer. B. Certain processing methods can reduce or alter allergenic proteins, but others may have no effect or even increase allergenicity. It's important to understand the impact of processing on allergens for food safety. Question 65. 
How can blockchain technology be utilized to enhance food traceability and safety? A. Blockchain is too complex for the food industry. B. By providing a secure, transparent, and immutable record of food products journey from farm to table. C. Blockchain technology is only useful for cryptocurrency transactions. D. It's used to enhance the flavor profile of food products. Answer B. By providing a secure, transparent, and immutable record of food products journey from farm to table. Blockchain can significantly improve traceability and safety in the food supply chain. Question 66. Discuss the potential food safety concerns associated with indoor vertical farming. A. There are no concerns. Indoor farming is completely safe. B. Challenges include controlling pathogens in a closed environment and ensuring water used for hydroponics is free from contaminants. C. The main concern is the artificial lighting used, which can degrade food quality. D. Vertical farming eliminates the need for food safety practices. Answer. B. Challenges include controlling pathogens in a closed environment and ensuring water used for hydroponics is free from contaminants. Managing these risks is essential for the safety of produce from indoor vertical farms. Question 67. Explain the role of salt in food preservation and its impact on microbial growth. A. Salt makes food too salty, discouraging consumption and spoilage. B. Salt draws moisture out of foods and microbes, inhibiting the growth of bacteria, yeasts, and molds. C. Salt has no preservative effect. Its use is purely for flavor. D. The impact of salt on microbial growth is a myth. Answer. B. Salt draws moisture out of foods and microbes, inhibiting the growth of bacteria, yeasts, and molds. Its osmotic effect makes it a valuable tool for food preservation. Question 68. What are the key food safety considerations in the development of functional foods? A. Ensuring that added nutrients do not interact negatively with other food components or compromise the product's safety. B. Functional foods are always safe due to their health benefits. C. The only consideration is enhancing physical performance, not safety. D. Safety considerations are secondary to proving health claims. Answer. A. Ensuring that added nutrients do not interact negatively with other food components or compromise the product's safety. Balancing nutritional benefits with food safety is crucial in the development of functional foods. Question 69. Describe the public health implications of antimicrobial resistance in the food chain. A. Antimicrobial resistance enhances food flavors, presenting no public health concerns. B. The spread of antimicrobial resistant bacteria through the food chain can lead to infections that are harder to treat, posing serious public health challenges. C. Resistance is limited to medical settings and does not affect the food chain. D. Cooking eliminates all antimicrobial resistant bacteria, so there are no implications. Answer. B. The spread of antimicrobial resistant bacteria through the food chain can lead to infections that are harder to treat, posing serious public health challenges. Addressing this issue is vital for food safety and public health. Question 70. How do the principles of molecular biology contribute to advances in food safety testing? A. Molecular biology is unrelated to food safety and focuses on genetic engineering only. B. Techniques like PCR allow for rapid, sensitive detection of pathogens, improving response times to contamination events. C. Molecular biology complicates food safety testing, making it less effective. D. It's used exclusively for enhancing food flavors, not for safety testing. Answer. B. Techniques like PCR allow for rapid, sensitive detection of pathogens, improving response times to contamination events. Molecular biology has revolutionized food safety testing, making it more accurate and efficient. Question 71. Discuss the challenges of ensuring the safety of foods containing live probiotics. A. 
Live probiotics are harmful and should be avoided in food production. B. Balancing the survival of beneficial probiotics with the need to control harmful pathogens, requiring specific formulation and storage conditions. C. Probiotics eliminate the need for other food safety measures. D. The main challenge is the cost of incorporating probiotics into foods. Answer B. Balancing the survival of beneficial probiotics with the need to control harmful pathogens, requiring specific formulation and storage conditions. Managing probiotics in food requires careful safety considerations. Question 72. Explain the impact of food texture and composition on the survival of pathogens during processing. A. Texture and composition have no impact on pathogen survival. B. Certain textures and compositions can protect pathogens from processing treatments, necessitating tailored safety approaches for different food types. C. Only the color of the food affects pathogen survival, not texture or composition. D. Pathogens are equally likely to survive in all foods, regardless of texture or composition. Answer. B. Certain textures and compositions can protect pathogens from processing treatments, necessitating tailored safety approaches for different food types. Understanding the interaction between food properties and pathogen survival is key to effective food safety management. Question 73. What strategies can be employed to minimize the formation of acrylamide in cooked foods? A. Acrylamide formation cannot be controlled or minimized. B. Cooking at lower temperatures, avoiding prolonged cooking times, and using asparaginase to reduce asparagine levels in foods. C. Adding sugar before cooking to counteract acrylamide formation. D. The only effective strategy is to avoid cooking foods altogether. Answer. B. Cooking at lower temperatures, avoiding prolonged cooking times, and using asparaginase to reduce asparaging levels in foods. These strategies help reduce the risk of acrylamide formation, a concern for food safety. Question 74. Describe the regulatory and safety considerations for the use of food irradiation. A. Food irradiation is banned globally due to safety concerns. B. Ensuring the process does not compromise nutritional quality or introduce radiolytic compounds regulated by health authorities to verify safety and efficacy. C. Irradiation is only used for changing the color of foods, with no safety benefits. D. Safety considerations involve ensuring the irradiation machinery does not contact the food. Answer. B. Ensuring the process does not compromise nutritional quality or introduce radiolytic compounds regulated by health authorities to verify safety and efficacy. Food irradiation is a controlled process used to ensure the safety of certain food items. Question 75. How does the microbial ecology of the food processing environment influence product safety? A. The microbial ecology is solely determined by the cleanliness of the processing environment, with no direct impact on product safety. B. A diverse microbial environment can harbor pathogens if not properly controlled, necessitating rigorous hygiene practices to ensure product safety. C. Microbial ecology has no relevance in food processing environments, only the end product microbiology matters. D. Encouraging microbial diversity in food processing areas improves product safety through competition. Answer B. A diverse microbial environment can harbor pathogens if not properly controlled, necessitating rigorous hygiene practices to ensure product safety. Managing the microbial ecology is essential for preventing contamination. Question 76. Discuss the significance of best before and use by dates in managing food donations to minimize waste and ensure safety. A. These dates are only suggestions and have no real impact on food safety. B. Best before dates indicate quality, while use by dates are safety indicators. Understanding these distinctions helps manage donations effectively, balancing safety and waste reduction. C. 
Food donations should only include items with extended use-by dates for safety. D. Donated foods are exempt from best before and use-by date regulations. Answer B. Best before dates indicate quality, while use-by dates are safety indicators. Understanding these distinctions helps manage donations effectively, balancing safety and waste reduction. Proper interpretation of these dates is crucial for safe food donation practices. Question 77. Explain the food safety challenges and considerations for catering services at large events. A. Large events pose no additional food safety challenges compared to small gatherings. B. Challenges include maintaining proper temperatures, preventing cross-contamination, and managing food in varying environmental conditions, requiring meticulous planning and execution. C. The primary challenge is ensuring an adequate supply of food, with safety as a secondary concern. D. Food safety is easier to manage at large events due to economies of scale. Answer B. Challenges include maintaining proper temperatures, preventing cross-contamination, and managing food in varying environmental conditions, requiring meticulous planning and execution. Large events demand comprehensive food safety measures to protect public health. Question 78. What are the implications of biotechnology on food safety and regulatory compliance? A. Biotechnology exclusively introduces new hazards, complicating regulatory compliance. B. It offers tools for enhancing food safety, such as pathogen-resistant crops, but also raises regulatory challenges to ensure these innovations do not introduce unintended risks. C. Biotechnology has no real application in food safety. D. Regulatory compliance is relaxed for biotechnologically produced foods due to their inherent safety. Answer. B. It offers tools for enhancing food safety, such as pathogen-resistant crops, but also raises regulatory challenges to ensure these innovations do not introduce unintended risks. Navigating the safety and regulatory landscape of biotech foods is essential for their safe use. Question 79. Describe the factors affecting the shelf life and safety of low-moisture foods. A. Low moisture foods have unlimited shelf life and pose no safety concerns. B. Factors include water activity, packaging, and storage conditions. Even low moisture foods can support the growth of certain pathogens if not properly managed. C. Only the initial quality of ingredients affects the shelf life of low moisture foods. D. The primary factor is the color of the food packaging. Answer B. Factors include water activity, packaging, and storage conditions. Even low-moisture foods can support the growth of certain pathogens if not properly managed. Proper management of these factors is crucial for ensuring the safety and quality of low-moisture foods. Question 80. How can sensory analysis be used as a tool for food quality and safety assessment? A. Sensory analysis is only relevant for tasting competitions, not for safety assessment. B. Through the evaluation of taste, smell, and appearance, sensory analysis can detect changes indicating spoilage or contamination not visible through other means. C. It is less accurate than chemical testing, so it's not used in food safety. D. Sensory analysis involves adding artificial flavors to mask any safety issues. Answer B. Through the evaluation of taste, smell, and appearance, sensory analysis can detect changes indicating spoilage or contamination not visible through other means. Sensory analysis is a valuable tool for initial quality and safety assessments. Question 81. Discuss the role of international food safety standards in global trade. A. International standards restrict global trade by imposing unnecessary regulations. B. They harmonize safety requirements, facilitating trade by ensuring products meet universally accepted safety levels. C. Only applicable to developed countries, not affecting global trade. D. International standards are guidelines only, with no real impact on trade practices. Answer. B. 
They harmonize safety requirements, facilitating trade by ensuring products meet universally accepted safety levels. International food safety standards are crucial for maintaining public health and trust in the global food supply. Question 82. Explain the importance of cross-functional teams in developing and implementing food safety plans. A. Cross-functional teams complicate the planning process and are generally avoided. B. By bringing together diverse expertise, cross-functional teams ensure that food safety plans are comprehensive and address all potential risks effectively. C. These teams are only necessary for large corporations, not small businesses. D. The main role of cross-functional teams is to reduce the cost of food safety plans. Answer B. By bringing together diverse expertise, cross-functional teams ensure that food safety plans are comprehensive and address all potential risks effectively. Collaboration across departments enhances the effectiveness of food safety initiatives. Question 83. What are the food safety considerations for the use of artificial intelligence in food manufacturing? A. Artificial intelligence replaces the need for human food safety managers, eliminating human error. B. I can optimize process control and hazard analysis, but it's important to ensure that algorithms are trained on comprehensive, accurate data to prevent oversight. C. The use of AI in food manufacturing raises ethical concerns, not safety considerations. T. Artificial intelligence has no practical application in food safety or manufacturing. Answer. B. I can optimize process control and hazard analysis, but it's important to ensure that algorithms are trained on comprehensive, accurate data to prevent oversight. Implementing AI in food safety processes requires careful validation and monitoring. Question 84. Describe the process and benefits of conducting environmental swabbing in food production areas. A. Environmental swabbing is an outdated practice replaced by visual inspections. B. Swabbing surfaces for pathogens and indicators of cleanliness helps identify potential sources of contamination, allowing for targeted sanitation and preventive measures. C. Considered only necessary in medical settings, not in food production. D. The primary benefit is to create a map of microbial communities for academic research. Answer. B. Swabbing surfaces for pathogens and indicators of cleanliness helps identify potential sources of contamination, allowing for targeted sanitation and preventive measures. Environmental swabbing is a critical component of a proactive food safety program. Question 85. How do geopolitical factors influence food safety regulations and practices? A. Geopolitical factors have no impact on food safety, which is solely based on scientific principles. B. They can lead to variations in food safety standards and enforcement, affecting international trade and requiring companies to navigate a complex regulatory landscape. C. Geopolitical considerations only affect the labeling of food products. D. The main influence is on the pricing of food safety testing equipment. Answer. B. They can lead to variations in food safety standards and enforcement, affecting international trade and requiring companies to navigate a complex regulatory landscape. Geopolitical dynamics play a significant role in shaping the global food safety environment.